Hey, we're here at Toys R Us in Toronto, Canada. I'm gonna take you inside. We're gonna do a toy hunt with a friend of mine. I'm here with my friend Mo and DK. Why don't you come along and see what we find inside? Um, you know, how do you normally find yourself in a Toys R Us? What are you usually doing here? Well, I'm, I'm using my four-year-old daughter as an excuse to get in the doors. My name is Clement Chu. I'm the president of the Canadian Chinese Youth Athletic Association. Also a big basketball fan, big 80s and 90s nerd. Uh, and so to come out here today is really exciting and kind of check out what's going on here at Toys R Us. I've been getting into Marvel, uh, but obviously growing up, you know, in the 80s and 90s, you know, watch a lot of G.I. Joe, watch a lot of Transformers. You know, these are the things you grew up on after school. So obviously you, you look at the associated toys, you know, that kind of came with it. And so kind of see everything kind of coming back at a different kind of quality gets me really excited. You know, we, I, we're trying to kill time. You use her to get in there? Yeah, like, I mean, we're trying to kill time in the mornings, a lot of time before lunch. I'm like, hey, you want to go to a toy store? And we start off in her aisles, slowly start migrating into my aisles, and then it's sort of this, uh, you know, push and pull to see who ends up uh, spending more time in their areas. But I always try to look for a little bit of something for her, a little bit of something for me, and, and that's kind of how I end up here. Do you ever have this thing where, like, you know, you don't have to buy something every time you're here? But then, like, I, that's what I say, and then I'm, I'm paying for my stuff. Yeah. So I feel kind of bad. I mean, also part of it is, like, I've just grown up on this thing where I want to support businesses, you know? Yes. And, and so it's like if I walk in a place, like, I get something, like, a little bit small, right? But, like, just looking at what's available now in toy stores compared to, like, our era. Like when you used to buy like an action figure, everybody looked exactly the same. Yeah. But now the technology is so good that like even if you're spending, you know, ten dollars, twenty dollars on a figure, they actually look like the people they're like supposed the to look yeah. like. Yeah. And and that's why like I love walking in here and looking at the progression of how toys have, have come to be. Yeah. And and also like I mean, I'm sure these these marketing people know that there's people like us that are interested in, in sort of coming into these places for the nostalgia purposes as opposed to Huge just picking factor. up the toy. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why for me it's like really exciting to look and, and find things that maybe I couldn't have got as a kid, but now I have you know the opportunity to get them and that's why my basement's pretty cluttered, but, but hey, it, it makes life a little bit more fun. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> What, what kind of stuff did you collect growing up? And like, what were your favorite things to play with? Like, I'm a big sports guy, yeah. so I was like collecting things like starting lineup figures. Oh, like starting lot. lineup's coming back, did you hear? I heard, I heard. Hasbro Pulse always has the coolest stuff. Yes. Uh, it's super expensive, but it's really cool stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of bobbleheads and yeah. things like that. So I used to collect, and then these things would just get beaten down and beaten down yeah, and yeah, I'd yeah. lose them and stuff. And now that everything's kind of coming back at this higher grade quality, it's, it's really, really neat to see. So I'd collect a lot of that kind of stuff. Obviously, you know, had a lot of the early GI Joes, a lot of the early Transformers. And again, okay. beat them to death. I don't know where they are. Probably have arms and legs, you know, located in basements all over the place. But yeah. those are the kind of things I had growing up. <laughs> Clem, uh, one time you messaged me, you're like, what Star Wars helmet should I get? Right. You got the Boba Fett helmet. I did. What's in your display at home? It started off with a Stormtrooper helmet. And uh, yeah. you know, I think that I got that as a present uh, for Simu uh, because there was a red one that came out. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. customized it with a uh, raptor claw going across the front of the face. Yeah. And also a logo in the back. So I got him one Ooh. and I was like, oh, I'm going to pick one up for myself. So that was one. And then I was like, oh, I, I can't have it in balance. So I went and got Darth Vader one, start going down this yep. rat hole, and then ended up getting the Boba Fett one that you were telling me it's hard to get. So it made me, get, made me more challenged to go and find it, yeah. right? But like Star Wars definitely is near and dear to my heart. And what I find super cool about looking at the toys now is that they, they actually take the care. It's not just the toys, but like the packaging, right? Oh my gosh. Like this is the, the Kenner, right? Like I, I love the fact that they're, they're using this traditional font right here, right? And it's like, this is exactly how they used to have it in the 80s with the big piece of cardboard, 
you know, have the guy in, in the plastic yeah. right here. Like for a while, they were going towards packaging, like for instance, like in this higher end stuff. And yeah, that's good and everything. But for someone like me who kind of grew up in the era, mm -hmm. you know, this is this is it. This kind of hits home. We talked about nostalgia, right? Yeah. That's what this is. The whole thing, recreating that feel and that vibe. It's like it's like something you got out of a time capsule. Exactly. And then you get to experience it again. So. They, they do a lot like the retro stuff. That's actually the more traditional articulation, where th this stuff has more more movement and parts. But you know, they're, it's it's everywhere. Lando is slick. <laughs> That's why like I kind of gravitated to this character. Like I mean, I definitely know there's like a lot more uh, more mainstream uh, kind of appealing type of characters. But but Lando definitely was like yeah. the original kind of hustler, right? Smooth. Kind of playing both talking. sides yeah. of the coin. Uh, Clem. CCYAA, how long have you been in charge or with them, with the organization? Yeah, me and my buddies, we started in 1995. Uh, it was mainly because, you know, we were the only, one of the only Asian guys to play basketball in, in the city. And okay. the thing is, we just didn't find there was a lot of places for people like us to play in an organized manner. So we started our own leagues, started our own camps, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew where to the point now where a lot of uh, kids who look like us are able to get opportunities to play, you know, in rep teams and college and yeah. stuff like that. So we've kind of changed our mandate where we're focused a little bit more on getting kids away from the screens and loving physical activity, but also um, representation, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a big part of what we do. And, and so like, like anything, we, we've evolved. And, and I think that it's an exciting new opportunity for the organization. Um, I, I mean, I've only become involved recently in the last few years. You've been a coach? I've it been a coach, you know, now my knees. Um, you know, you go player, coach, what's after coach? Because then, you know, if you can't play, you become a coach. Commentator, I guess? Administrator. Maybe? Administrator, yeah. office. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've been in it for so long. DK was telling me, he, like, you, you, did he coach you or just coach? Oh my you gosh, that's when scary. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? AY Jackson? Yeah, 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 I remember that. So it was like, my dad used to run a Chinese school, right? Okay. So I used to see him import all these Chinese school books and like writing pads and stuff like that from Hong Kong, teach the kids. So I feel like it was always in me to oh, do stuff okay. like this. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. when I got to become a teenager and I started this stuff, I would just get stacks of basketballs and green t-shirts and stuff like that in my basement. Yeah. And we'd be sitting there with our friends labeling each one for oh, each man. kid and how old it is. And so look at a lot of the stuff uh, the younger staff are doing now. That's exactly the stuff I used to be doing you know, in my basement. You mm -hmm. know? And so I could always say that I think that my parents had a big influence on me to kind of for do sure. stuff. But I was able to take stuff that wasn't exciting to me, which is <laughs> Chinese school, but take things that were exciting to me, which was basketball. And the crazy thing is with the sport, I've gotten to know people like you. Yeah. I've gotten to go to all these crazy places and learn all these crazy things simply because of the sport. And right. it doesn't have to do with me playing it. Mm -hmm. It has to do with me being involved in it. Well, you're, you're bringing it to like a huge audience. You built like a really great community. You know, in terms of representation, you recently started with Jeremy Lin and the Jeremy Lin School of Basketball. She let everyone know. Yeah. How, like how that came about and like the goal there with, with working with Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, we've always known about that guy. Like, yeah. you know, ever since he was in high school in Palo Alto, we knew there was this Taiwanese kid, Amer Taiwanese American kid that was like really good. And so we always tracked his progress, but uh, he was just trying to make the league. So it was really hard for us to kind of pin him down and do work with him. Okay. But, you know, every time he came to Toronto, he's very generous with his time. He'd come and meet, you know, with the community after games and stuff like that. Uh, eventually got to the point where uh, I was running these um, kind of career seminars for non-traditional career paths for, for Asians. Right. So I didn't want an accountant or a doctor or lawyer, no, no shade on them, but I wanted people who were say in the military, in professional sports, and I decided to run this one seminar for people in Hollywood. So okay. I had a special effects person, had a production person, and I needed uh, an actor. So my friend referred me, he's like, I know this young guy that just got on the show called Kim's Convenience. I was like, okay, let's bring him out. You know, paid for a gas card, kind of drove up to Markham and did a talk with the kids about, you know, how to become an actor and representation and stuff. And wow. lo and behold, he was a huge Jeremy Lin fan. And Jeremy Lin was in town one day, introduced the two. This is in 2019. 
Jeremy gets traded to Toronto. Yeah. Those two become buddies. Then Simu becomes Shang-Chi. And just Skywalker all of this kind of like 2019. takes off. Yeah, it's that magical year 2019. All this stuff kind of takes off at one time. And and I think that between, you know, the relationship that we had with Jeremy and when we had uh, and the one we built with Simu, that definitely helped to elevate what we were trying to do as an organization. Have you seen Lightyear yet? I haven't. I haven't. But you know, just again, like looking at how this stuff has evolved is just insane. Like you're talking about at one point, if you had these toys in like in the 80s, like you wouldn't be able to like make out who was what. But I mean, you yeah. look at the, the literally like there's no like the edging on, on you know where the eyes are and the articulation yeah. of the face All and the stuff like that. Yeah, it's in there. Man, it's it's crazy now, and and all the things it can do, and all the points of articulation and the joints and stuff. Is... D, should I get this DK? Yeah. DK's like if if celebrities have managers and, and accountants, he's my he's not my financial accountant, he's my collection consultant. Right. Because uh, I have I have so much stuff where it's like, get what I actually want. So can I get this? Yes, you can. All right, let's do it. DC stuff? Yeah, I mean, to be, it's funny, like, as far as, as biased as I am towards my guy, like, I, I'm definitely leaning more towards, like, sort of darker stories, like Dark Knight. Yes. Definitely was, it might be my favorite movie of all time. Oh, wow. You know, and when I look at, like, like that, you know, those, the shots they did in Hong Kong, or, you know, the yeah, first yeah, bank yeah, yeah. high scene and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that stuff is just amazing to I me. Mean, I had friends who were collecting hot toys and stuff like that, and they have like the tumbler, you know, yeah, in their house the in a glass case. I think that's what kind of got me back into looking at toys as something that you collect. Yeah. And he just has this house full of like these amazing one six scale, you know, figures and stuff like that. But that is like an expensive hobby. But this you know, in expensive. meeting meeting your friend Ryan and kind of understanding what Legends is kind of bringing to the table in terms of the the, the new action figures quality is right there so you can enjoy this stuff for thirty dollars as opposed to three hundred dollars yeah, yeah, yeah right and i think that that's what's exciting i think for people who are really into the culture beyond just like having things in a box you can break it out and not feel so bad about it and actually have it you know laid out in display versus like if you just keep it in a box yeah. because you're worried about its resale value i, I just don't feel like you're getting anything out of it hey here you go yeah there's my guy um there this guy, go. yeah, he's got the, uh, the, I think the, yeah, the staff, the, the, the staff action on the hip. But like, even this is like, this is cool to me because like, at what point would we have had, you know, an action figure or A someone like this? Asian character, like action figure. Yeah, and she, Munger, the actress, she's yeah. like a good buddy of ours. She's kind of living in Toronto right now. You know, like what an amazing path from someone who came from the you know, traditional theater path. Right. You know, become a movie star. She kicks ass. Her, yeah, her first, uh, you know, acting gig, she's in the middle of a Marvel movie. And yeah. it's, it's the same thing with Simu. It's just incredible. The only thing I don't get is that, like, I mean, it's a pretty limited selection of the cast that they actually have available yeah. as part of this series, right? Yes. Hopefully in the next one, you know, they'll, they'll have a, a few more of the guys. Like, I don't understand like, how you can't have Razor Fist in here. Yeah, the other, the other cool thing about this, and I can't find a Legends one because it's probably sold out by now, is that uh, Simu actually snuck me the Air Jordans he was wearing in the movie. Uh, Does this have it? This this doesn't have no, it. Those are I, I know black I shoes. know in the Legends one it's yeah. a little bit it's a little bit more clear. But he actually snuck those Jordans to me. They're called the Jordan Access. Like nobody really has these shoes, but they're pre they scuffed them for the movie. Right. And they actually scoured the world to buy like as many the pairs as they stock. could. Yeah, exactly. So he got one pair. Uh, off the set for me and now I have it in my basement. Is it on display? I have this thing called like the the floating grail display. So it's like a magnetic. Um, oh, no way. Yeah, it's like a magnetic uh, display where you put it in the heel. And so the sneaker is just floating and it's just what? spinning around in the have air. Have you heard of this? Are you Iron Man? I have that in my basement along with like every single, you know, toy from the series movie posters and everything yes my wife can't stand it she's like i'm <laughs> so sick of seeing this guy's face in our house marvel legends 20th iron man is this the new bucky that's the new bucky this is the new bucky there's a whole one two three pegs of it here do they have wong here from doctor uh, strange 
They I have. feel like I'm on this like representation thing. No, I get it. I'm trying Wong, to hunt down like like I see Gemma. I see Gemma right here. Right. Wong is has been in like eight Marvel properties. Yeah. I think, and only one figure that just came out for Multiverse of Madness. And yo, Twentieth Hulk. Do I need this? Yeah, of course. Ah, oh, you're the worst <laughs> consultant. Are you getting a commission on this? What's going on? Oh, DK. Dinosaurs. Baryonyx, Parasaurolophus. Wow, that's a good pronunciation. My, my son was all over. Yeah. And then as a result, my daughter watches all the stuff, so all day long. Parasaurolophus. Yeah. yeah, Maddie doesn't know anything about this stuff yet. She just started Pokemon like three weeks ago. No! My, Which my is, kids just started like last week or two weeks ago. That's so annoying. Should we get some Pokemon cards? Yeah. Yes, let's get some Pokemon Man, cards. but it is annoying. She has, she <laughs> Why is it one, annoying? She just got one yesterday that just says Pika Pika all the time. Yeah. So like all through the night, she's holding it and all you hear is just Pika Pika. Oh no, pika, I would, pika, who, pika, pika. did you buy the talking toy? No, I didn't buy it. It's always some, yeah. some friend who like, I don't know, Doesn't maybe have they kids. don't have kids. There you go, exactly. Yeah. Are you recording? <laughs> Thank you. They don't oh have my kids. God. Last night, all night, you just see a little red light. Pika, pika. Oh my pika, gosh, pika. the like... worst. I was at Target with my family, and yeah. there was an there was an Eevee, and all I think all Eevee says is like Eevee or something. I don't know. But it's a talk. I'm like, it's a nice looking toy, and then I read the the captions like lights and sounds, real talking phrase. So I looked at my dad who was with me. I'm like, don't point this out. Don't buy it for the kids, okay? So he's like, okay. Then my mom comes in afterwards. She's like, oh, this is cute. Do you want it? I'm like, stop. Don't get a drum set for the kids. Right. Don't get talking toys. No, like, kazoos or recorders. And they're like, Bee -bee. And like, no. They, they don't even know how to play. The, here's the funny thing. Power Rangers was like, this shows you how old I am. This was like, actually, like, I was too old for this. Already. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention to Power Rangers. But Master of the Universe, this is there crazy. This is like He-Man. Let's see this. Battle Cat? The whole He-Man series had things that were pretty cool, like many faces, you could you could switch the faces. Yeah. He-Man had this chest plate. I had the ro rotating yeah, chest. Yeah, like you, you, you could punch him. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. you could just flip. But the way they did it was so good. It wasn't just some like piece of foil. You yeah. know, it literally, the entire thing was It's like a cylinder around. that rotates the battle damage. Yeah, no, that's crazy, because then now they have all these different sets. You can get it, you know, there you go. Vintage, retro style. But it kills, the, the variations kill me now. Right, like there, there's almost like too much choice, and there's like too many things, and and so that's the thing about collecting. Just I buy, find buy I have to stay it. in a lane. I mean sneakers too, right? Yes, like let's you, talk like about sneakers. We used yeah. to, we used to go with like everyone wants a pair of ones. Yeah. And I'm pretty pissed off about how it's like there's so many variations of ones now, mm -hmm. so many variations of ones that are just on the Chicago colorways. You know, yeah. and, and it's just like it's ridiculous. Like I, I don't know, even know where you're supposed to start and stop. So I've actually started to swerve a little bit and said, okay, if I grew up in the 90s, yes. I'm sticking with traditional colorways from players in the 90s. Okay. You see, today I'm wearing D Brown Reebok pumps, right? Like that's, that's what I'm doing, right? Yeah. I'm not going to go, because Kobe's not my era. I'm not going to collect like every single Kobe color. I'm not going to collect the KDs. I'm not going to collect the LeBrons. You know, I got to stay that's in my fair. lane. So that's that's because that's the only way you can manage your real estate in your house. Otherwise, you end up like me, and I need a collection consultant. Yeah, a collection consultant, and then you're going to end up put, having to rent storage, you know, to kind of put all your stuff away, and then you need temp control, you need humidity control. It's like <laughs> a whole, control. it's a whole that's thing true. for it's the a leather. Whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's why it's like I have to everything I'm collecting now. I have to stay in my lane because it doesn't stop. These guys just keep putting out the goods, yep. and you have to make a decision. And Sometimes, like, toy collectors know it's kind of like sneakers, too. Sometimes you want one to rock, one to stock. Right. One to hold on to in case the value, right? So then if you're doing that with shoes and then you're doing that with toys, then your, your uh, real estate at home is diminishing, like, exponentially with each thing that comes out. So it takes <laughs> more effort and more money, but so, I'm staying in my in lane. In my lane. Yeah. Right, we have a theme. This episode is going to be called... <laughs> Staying in my lane. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! You didn't get that, did you? You had the Celebrity Classic. Yeah. And that was the weekend Simu went out to audition for 
Yeah, uh, tw Shang 2019, it's crazy. So 2019, we're, we're approaching the weekend of, of the Celebrity Classic that we've been planning for months. And he's like, dude, I can't make it. And I was like, what? You're like the headliner. But he didn't even need to tell me. I knew why he couldn't make it. And it was, he, later on, I found out it was because that was his last audition he did in New York with Aquafina on a full sound stage. Oh, wow. Scheduled for the Saturday. I go, dude, we'll hold it down. You do what you got to do. And the crazy thing is this guy delayed Marvel. He actually said, I have this thing I need to do with my friends in Toronto. Can we push it to Monday? I can't believe that guy pushed off his Marvel for edition for you for the Monday. And, and it's like he went and and then like on, I think on the Tuesday or Wednesday, like we, we get we get the call and we're just like, you got it. Like life changes right now. And it was just uh, insane. it's amazing. But the fact that this this event that we had is kind of interwoven into the story of like kind of how we got, you know, that role. Yeah. It's just it's just funny how it's like all part of it. It's amazing, you know? And then to have like he was to already be associated with him and then he just like skyrockets with you know blockbuster franchise mcu and then now it gets more people involved with the uh, celebrity classic the second one you just pulled off we we pulled off yeah i don't like to say we because i you know no we're every, all part everyone of it, but yeah it's a huge accomplishment it was just last was it this month last month yeah a few three weeks ago felt like a yeah. long time ago you know talk talk about that like all, all the celebrities that you got in uh, you know, huge stadium, uh, just a huge event. I think it went off beautifully. Yeah, I, I mean, we we started the first one in 2019. Yeah. Uh, obviously, pandemic kind of put everything in terms of live events on hold, but we were just kind of brewing on it, brewing on it. And then once we got the go ahead in like February, March this year, we're like, are we doing this? And he's like, yeah, we're doing this, right? Because yeah. he has this amazing Rolodex of people that he's met along his path. So we just scrambled to kind of get the venue up and running with our fantastic team uh, of volunteers from CCYA. It says, Simu, all we need you to do is get the celebrities because there's no celebrity classic without celebrities. Yeah. So I remember he was kind of really busy at that time because he was filming Barbie in London. It was just like, they're constantly getting locked down by COVID and it's just oh, really, shit. really busy. And one day when he was here filming the Junos, we literally locked him in a room because we're like, <laughs> we have no time left to kind of get these guys locked down. He literally, we would sit beside him, go through his his his, his phone. phone and pick out celebrities that he had in his phone. So oh call this guy, text this person, text this person. And that's literally how we got the roster pulled together. That's and crazy. I think I think one of the best ones was uh, with Ronnie. We met up with him while he was here doing this uh, comedy show, his live comedy show. And I said, hey, did Simu talk to you about uh, being in this game? And he's like, no. I was like, <laughs> Okay, so you're in our marketing material already. He told me he talked to you. He's like, he did not talk to me. And I was like, that's okay. A good, that's a good Ronnie, actually. I, I, and I was like, can you, can, can, can you come? He goes, I will come if I have absolutely nothing else to do, but I really, really hope I'm busy that weekend. But if I really have nothing else to do, I'll come, okay? And I'm like, so what does that mean? And so for months, we just didn't know what that meant. And I, yeah. I told Simu, I was like, hey, that's what he said. And he goes, yeah, 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 don't worry, we'll figure it out, right? And at the last minute, he's like, okay, but I need a live flat seat, no stopover. I'm coming in the day of the game. So literally yeah. he arrived in Toronto at 3 p.m. for a 6 p.m. tip off at right. Toronto Pearson amidst like airport chaos and oh, national shit. network outages and stuff like yeah. that. You know, and, and Hassan Minhaj came, yeah. I think, mainly to spite Ronnie. So it's like, without Ronnie... Spite appearance. Yeah, without I Ronnie, like there's no Hassan. So it's like all this stuff is interconnected. All yeah. these guys know each other. And I think that kudos to the team because they pull off such a wonderful event that everyone has such a good time that I think they definitely want to come back next year. Were these like the oh, ones you played gosh. with? Wow. This... <laughs> This stuff is classic. Destro. Yeah, never understood how someone could exist inside a metal mask and not like sweat. Suffocate? Yeah, suffocate and sweat to death. But this, oh my God, this whole section is like the throwback. You got Soundwave, like I remember the original Soundwave that, and you could buy like the cassettes that came with like the little guy that came out, Ravage, is I that think. True? The, like yeah. the Puma D and stuff DK's like that. The, yeah, he's the, 
Yeah, like the, these original, the original Transformers, not these smaller versions, were just yeah. mind blowing in terms of what they could do uh, at, at that, you know, in that era. Explain, explain this to me. How is it? Why are Ninja Turtles crossed over with Cobra Kai? I can't explain this to you. Uh, we're here in the Pokemon section. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're two dads whose kids recently got into Pokemon. Uh, we don't know what we're talking about, so you know we're gonna m mess some stuff up. <laughs> Feel free to rip on us in the comments. But what what got your your daughter into Pokemon? YouTube. Uh, I mean, she started going down this thing about watching other people playing video games. And then I think it, it started with Mario, and then okay. it kind of got into Pokemon. Now she's yeah, like... The Nintendo. It's, she's only been into it for two weeks, but now she's rattling off all these characters yeah. about their powers, about the rules, and I don't understand what's going on. What's your favorite Pokemon on. type? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> like, she just... That's she, I, I I'm half listening to what she's saying, but like... We used to walk the Mario aisle, and I know that when we go to a toy store next week, yeah. we're going to probably be hitting up the Pokemon aisle. There you go. My daughter, all day long, it's like, uh, Dad, what's your favorite Pokemon? I, I don't know. She's like, Eevee has eight different evolutions. There's Flareon and all this. And I'm like, hey, do you remember what you're supposed to do in the morning when you wake up? She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, so you can remember eight evolutions of a Pokemon, but when I tell you to go change your clothes and brush your teeth, that stuff, gone. Yeah, I mean, the, this stuff, like I know it's like a whole different world when you get into this Pokemon stuff, but like I, where I learned a lot from this is uh, watching the South Park episode with, with uh, when they're talking about Chin Pokemon. And all I remember is how addictive, you know, uh, all the, ca the characters on South Park got from playing Pokemon. It was actually some secret like uh, kind of subliminal way that they were trying to control American youth. <laughs> so I don't think that's necessarily the case. But, uh, but yeah, my daughter's like super into this. And the, and the one thing I will say that she's getting out of it is she's, she's learning a lot about, you know, the statistics behind the game in terms right. of how one wins versus someone else. So that's interesting to me in terms of the, the math portion of, of what she's getting out of it. I think it's helping my son learn how to read. Right. Like names and stuff and recognition. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, um, I mean, these things aren't easy to pronounce, right? So. No, but. which is kind of scary. Uh, the cool part is I've always wanted something like this, but I had no reason to get it. Now that the kids are into it, I have an excuse. I've now made this part of my lane. Nice. I'm owning it. All right. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff today, Clem. Yeah. Uh, let's s show everyone what you got. Yeah, so I, I see here, this thing's called the surprise attack game. I figure anybody who's going to play Pokemon, like my daughter wants to surprise and attack me. You want to be attacked? It's going to happen. <laughs> I think it's going to happen regardless. If you have kids, they will attack you. Yeah, got to get the, the Sha Ling, uh, you know, action figure represent for my friend Meng Erzang. Gemma Chan from uh, The Eternals. Uh, again, on the representation piece, but don't actually have anything from The Eternals yet. Like I was mentioning, my daughter is getting into watching people play video games. Right. And so she started learning about Mario. And so Mario is sort of her, her first obsession before Pokemon. So. This looks pretty cool. I have, a, I have a one and a half year old. I figured these ones be a little bit more tangible for her to kind of you, understand. Without looking at the tag, where are they? No idea. I got, of course, the number one Butter Ranger. This is Man Cake from Fortnite. Yeah, that reaction says it all. He has a face, stack of pancakes, syrup. He's got a butter bandolier. The new Winter Soldier, Marvel Legends 20th anniversary Iron Man. Eevee, Torchic, didn't have to check the tag. I knew those names. Found another exclusive R2 and the new Boba Fett pack. Yeah. Uh, Clem, where can people check out CCYAA? What should they be looking out for coming up? Yeah, so you can find us at our website, which is ccyaa.org. Yep. Uh, or you can follow us on Instagram at, at ccyaa underscore, because obviously some, some kid took at ccyaa, and so we end up with an underscore. But uh, these are the places where you can find us. Uh, the big thing for us coming up this year is we're about to launch the Jeremy Lin Basketball School yep. uh, coming up this fall. So that's a collaborative effort between us and his team where it's not just about Jeremy giving us feedback in terms of the curriculum and stuff, but we're going to leverage like his trainer 
uh, to kind of teach kids about elite development. We're going to uh, leverage their, their new ambassador, uh, Natalie Cho, who used to play for UCLA, uh, you know, to talk about you know, women and representation in basketball. And even uh, their business manager, uh, Patricia, who takes care of all of this business, we're going to talk about sports marketing with the kids and stuff like that. So it's a, a very holistic approach mm -hmm. to basketball you know, from the lens of Jeremy Lin's team. And so that's something we're excited to bring to the community uh, you know, for all the kids. And so that's something big that we're working on. You also have merch that yep. supports the uh, CCYA. We have the Boba Raptor here in different variations. There's crew necks, long sleeves. There's a Grizzlies version. Um, I, you know, it's just, you always have all these ideas, right? Everything that comes together to help build up uh, the organization. And that's, you know, it's very uh, inspirational, I think. So, dude, thank you for being here. And everything you do is awesome. So, you know, keep up, keep up the good. Work. That sounds, that's corny. Just, okay, let's well, just cut.